What's up everyone? We're going to do a quick botany lesson today talking about what makes orchid flowers so special. It's really interesting and uh, I'm going to use this Phalaenopsis manii here and the uh, Paphiopetalum venustum in the background there to prove a really interesting point about uh, how the flower morphology differs within a couple of the subfamilies. It's really interesting stuff, so let's take a closer look. So the flowers of Phalaenopsis manii here are showing a distinguishing feature of most orchid flowers. Most of the family has this structure, and it's called a column or gynostemium. And it is a fused set of reproductive organs, so style, stigma, and anthers are all fused into this single structure right here. Now, Phalaenopsis is part of the largest subfamily of orchids, which is Epidendroidae. And this is a common feature, although it changes in shape uh, throughout most of that subfamily and the other subfamilies as well. But this video, of course, will show you a nice exception to this rule. The underside of the column here shows you where all of the action takes place. The little structure there with the uh, sort of spike coming off of it is the anther cap. It's a structure that protects the anthers underneath. And then that little pit or divot you see there on the column is the stigmatic surface and it's full of goo which helps pick up the pollen uh, when an another insect or whatever it is that pollinates this flower uh, visits. Underneath that anther cap there sits the actual anthers themselves and they are fused into two sacs covered in pollen grains called pollinia and that's one of the keys to orchid pollination. I have removed one of the pollinia and you can see on the tip of the knife there it's attached by glue. It's often glued to the back of whatever visits it, maybe not the back, or it could even be a beak or a wing. And the positioning of that pollinia is essential to reproduction in orchids because as all of the organs are fused, it has to pretty much be in the right place in the right position so that when it visits another flower of the same species, it can be deposited in the right place. Now the cap is on the left there. It's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a cap. And if you look in the center here, you can see the two yolk colored spots, those are the pollinia themselves, and they're covered in pollen grains. So this is essentially a, a little packet of reproductive cells, and that's why most orchid flowers only get one shot with their male contribution to reproduction, because it's all bundled up into these little sacs here. Alright, I've gone ahead and removed the anther cap there so that you can see all that remains are these two little sacs covered in pollen grains. And that's the male reproductive effort for that flower right there. Now because Epidendroidae and its members represent the largest subfamily of orchids, it means that most orchids within the orchid family, which is the largest family of flowering plants, uh, have this single column situation, except for the subfamily Cyperpedoidae, which is where the lady slippers hail from. Let's take a closer look. This is the flower of Paphiopetalum venustum. It's a wonderful sort of Southeast Asian, Southern Asia orchid that grows in really shady understories. And it's showing the unique feature of that subfamily, the pouch. This pouch-like lip or slipper unites the subfamily Cyperpodoidae in having a really cool pollination syndrome. The flowers of the lady slipper orchids are non-rewarding. There's no nectar in there. There's no pollen per se, to be eaten, uh, I'll get into that in a little bit, but they're just tricksters. And what they do is they advertise these brightly colored flowers. Some of them smell wonderful, uh, and insects fly in thinking they're going to get a meal. They hit this little uh, backboard here and fall down into the flower itself. So the only way out of this lower lip here is to crawl up through the back of the lip itself. In a way, these kind of act like pitcher plants, and that they are insect traps, but they give their victims a way out, and it's back this way. And as the insect squeezes its way through that hole, it comes into contact with the anthers. But as you can see here, there's not one hole, there are two, and each one is associated with an anther, which is breaking the rule I talked about earlier, in that there should only be a single fused reproductive structure, not two. This is what separates out the lady slippers, the subfamily Cyperpedoidae, from the rest of the orchids. 
Now each one of those little yellow packets there is a pollinia, just like we saw earlier. It's attached to the stigmatic surface, and so if this has already been removed and an insect flew into this flower with a pollinia already attached, it will brush up against that as it escapes and dust some pollen off. But this is diandrous, meaning it has two of those anthers instead of one like the other orchids. And taxonomists once used this as a reason to separate Cypripedoidae out from Orchidaceae and suggest that it deserved its own family, or if it didn't, it was at least basal or sister to all of the other orchids within Orchidaceae. Now, subsequent molecular work has since disproven this theory. Uh, when they looked at the genetic codes of all of this orchid subfamilies, they found that Cypripedoidae was nestled squarely within the orchid family itself. So they are not distinct in that case, but they do sit lower on the family tree. Fun fact, it's actually vanilla that is thought to be sister to all of the orchid lineage, or at least the subtribe that includes vanilla. So yeah, that's a nice quick botany lesson for you. A little bit of anatomy, a little bit of taxonomy, and of course, orchids are always wonderful. Thanks for watching. Please share these videos, and uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button.